Welcome, welcome, beautiful souls to the masterclass of becoming a Ka facilitator, where I would be introducing my story, what has been my trajectory, and also what are the six pillars of becoming a Ka facilitator. So what is it that my students are embodying to be this beautiful vessel of high frequency energy. So we're going to go through that. So let me share my screen with you. And I will be responding questions at the end. And also, if I don't get a chance to respond, I'm going to respond them on Instagram if anything comes up because the chat, I can look at the messages through the chat. So we're putting them up on Instagram as well. So let me share my screen, beautiful souls. Here we are. Just make sure everything's okay. Okay. So here we go. Everyone can see my screen. Give me a little thumbs up. Yeah, I can see some of you. Yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, beautiful. So I'm going to make my screen a little smaller now so you guys can see as well. All right. Oh my God, more people are jumping in Netherlands, Sweden. A lot of European. I love it. I'm going back to Europe in June. Well, will be there end of May. Um, and I have three, three students from Sweden right now. All right, people. Thank you, beautiful souls, for tuning in today. I respect your time. It's valuable, valuable. So I'm gonna give you as much information as I can. And also at the end, we're going to be giving you also a full card transmission. Uh, feel ready to like drop in your questions when the time comes and I'll do my best to answer them as we go. So we are right now in the energy of the full moon in Leo. It's a first full moon. When I run any of my ceremonies, and I'm sure if you're looking to become like a trained Ka facilitator, where I tell people it's like, really tune in to see who's meant to be your teacher. A lot of us have already made contracts before on who we need to work with and who has the codes that we need in order to wake up to the next level. So really, really tune in. So my style is very ceremonial. It sometimes is very shamanic, sometimes it's very goddessy, hotter. Um, you know, I work with the fairies. So it just depends because I'm a big... <laughs> I just open myself up and I let, let the energy flow. So taking in consideration of all the energy that is moving, and this is why right now so many people are awakening. What we're experiencing right now, it's nothing new. Nothing new at all with this new energy. We used to do this before. A lot of us are old souls. So right now, this is a first full moon of the year and it has come in right after um, Aquarius entering Pluto. So it's like the new humanity that's coming in. It's coming in with a roar. So there's a lot of emotions that are coming up right now. How have you been feeling with all these emotions that are coming up? Leo is like the mama, right? That protector. But Leo, when it's unbalanced, there's a lot of ego. So I want to Take and nurture this in. I hold monthly, well, bi-weekly ceremonies and every new moon and every full moon. And although I'm going to bring the Lyra and Lion energy, I'm also bringing in Aphrodite, the goddess of love, to be able to balance and neutralize because she knows how to work with all the emotions. Because this full moon is also talking about sacred sexuality. It's talking about relationships, new partnerships. It's talking about pleasure. So really... I mean, when you look at a lion, when you look at a lion, she's so proud and she owns her body. So I just want to take a moment for all of us to tune in to this beautiful portal. The full moon is going to be tomorrow around 9.50 p.m., I believe, 9.54 p.m., um, Los Angeles time. So more than 24 hours. So really best tonight with the full moon and tomorrow and do what you need to do. So we're creating this sacred space. Please stop multitasking. We have a pen and a workbook. Go ahead and take it out. And I ask that everyone comes in with a beginner's mind. Whatever you think you know, 
Just let it out. Open up your mind. So I do have a surprise, like I said, till the end. I'm only going to share with you guys on the chat at the end, the ebook. And there's three um, different tips there that I have for you. And I'll share with you as well that I will drop in the chat. So make sure that you do stay till the end to receive that. So I just want to make sure I have permission for you guys. And you guys know this up front to, you know, just permission to be raw and honest be able to flow and be divinely guided. I also speak light language. Sometimes it comes through or sing, get raw, get shamanic, and then be politically incorrect. And why do I say that? Because, uh, sorry, people are trying to get it and I can't get them in right now. Let me see if I can get them in through here. Here we go. Okay. To be politically incorrect because we're used to seeing things in a linear way. We think we need to get from A to B. Like one plus one does not equals two. In reality, it equals three, right? We have a woman and a man and it equals three, not two. So there are many things that are not linear, that are very spiral and everything at the end of the day is sacred geometry and it's mathematical. So I am not the, I'm the type of teacher that, especially of my background, I go beyond just the energy. I do understand a lot of what's happening um, because I also teach intuitive quantum healing. So I was a master energy healer before I started teaching um, Kundalini activation training. So now, now I teach it as Scott training. So let me just tell you a little bit about me and my background. I'm Peruvian. I'm born from like this beautiful, beautiful, just like high power shamanic mother. She's an oracle. My dad comes from the Puna. That means like high altitude area in, in the Andes region. He's an artist. He pays the pan flutes, like every instrument that you think about when you think of Andinian music. He's indigenous. I was born in Peru. So I've always had this background. My grandpa used to be able to read the tobacco, for example, and just like read your fortune through there. He will talk with elves. You know, there though he was he was basically a natural a human GPS. And he was guided very well. Like the earth talked to him. And my grandma, she knew how to pray. Praying is so powerful. And she just passed away. Um, so I've been going through that right now because it's very fresh for me. So I grew up in Peru and my biggest thing for me and I didn't realize is that I was always living in my masculine. Not only was I living in my masculine, I had become extremely independent and I had created this wall where I truly didn't let other people in, but truthfully, I didn't know who I was. Even though I work in corporate or working for top Fortune 500 company, actually Fortune 50, Fortune top 50 companies. I thought I had it all, but I didn't. Sooner than later, I realized I was empty inside. Even though I was still spiritual, I was doing all kinds of other stuff. I still had this barrier. So it's been five years, a little over five years ago. All of a sudden, everything just started it wasn't working out. It wasn't working out. It wasn't working out. Like usually business goes very well. I've always been in the sales side um, with technology, credit and finance and nothing was working out and I didn't understand. Um, and so then I parted ways and that's when I went deep, deep, deep into my own work. And I spent a lot of time doing my own shadow work. I went very, very deep and just let go of everything. And that's when I saw for the first time that I was a child of abandonment. It's so easy to see if someone knows my story, but I couldn't see it. So we have so many blinders that we don't even see. So the way that I explain it to people is like, you know, when someone knits a sweater, so there's all these little knots. So all of a sudden, say that you have a scarf or a sweater and one yard starts coming out. So all of a sudden this knot starts coming loose and you yank it. <laughs> and finally, you know, that knot is able to surrender, it loosens up and he lets go. So that's kind of like we are, we're that whole weaving 
And as you start pulling that yarn that's loose, one knot comes undone, the second one comes undone, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one, and it's almost never ending. <laughs> and as we go through this spiral, we start awakening healing gifts. So this is what I tell people. It's simultaneously the more work you do on yourself. That's why the path starts with you, with your own inner healing. That's when your spiritual, that's when your spiritual gift starts brewing. That's when they start blossoming. And it's little by little. And some of us go through what it's called the dark night of the soul, which for me was two and a half years. So that's my background. I run retreats in Peru. Here I am with Maria Passa, who is the highest Alto Misayo. She's 96 year old now. And we're doing um, initiations into the Inca lineage um, in Peru as well. People are like, how did you raise your Kundalini? So many different things. Uh, my base is actually with Paramahansa Yogananda, with SRF. I started with silent meditation over 10, 12 years ago. And then when, when I finally found him, because I was looking for a church like crazy, I went celibate for two to three years because through SRF, through the Serialization Fellowship, they, they find that enlightenment through celibacy. There's different ways to skin the cat. Then you have the Egyptian way. Isis, for example, it's more about sacred sexuality. You guys have heard about like sex magic. It's another way of awakening. So there's different ways. There's no wrong. There's no night, no right. There's no wrong. That's why I still peeps like, please listen to what your soul is telling you to do. Someone comes and says, oh, this is the best mantra um, for everyone should do this. Or this is the best breath work. I'm like, no. <laughs> I know what's the best thing for me right now. Does it work? Yes. You you need to listen to yourself. And this is the beauty about becoming a co-facilitator because you become more in tune with yourself and you know how to channel source, the divine, and hold it. And then once you're guided with source, you are trusting and you are flowing. So just, just a little bit about me and my background I had no intentions at all, like I said, to become a cat facilitator. I was in the corporate world right out of college for Cisco Systems, which is the foundation of routers, um, of routers, which is of the internet. So straight out of the Silicon Valley. And all of a sudden, everything shifted. So I spent a lot of time in Egypt doing many initiations, remembering the contracts that I had made to come back after 12,000 years because we had to destroy the network 12,000 years ago. And now that we're in Leo, because Leo season was coming in, Virgo was coming out. You know how right now we just left Pisces and Aquarius has come in. Now we're in that half of that turn, exactly that mirror. That's why February 22, 2022 was key. So I worked one year before that. And I worked with Matias De Stefano every single day doing the I Am Path as well. And that was huge. And going to Egypt, I think four or five, five times. And then I've taken my own groups as well afterwards to do the initiatic path. So a lot came up. But it's interesting because you start remembering one contract, then you start remembering another one, another one, because we've had so many lifetimes. So all of a sudden it was divine intervention. And then that's when I realized it was very simple. It was time for me. I had made a contract that I would, by this age, I was going to be doing what I'm doing now. But for that, I had to wake up. And yes, the dark night of the soul was not pretty. A lot of crying, a lot of time spending alone, a lot of breaking of the ego because I was very much living in my masculine. So that's that's what happened for me. So never in my life would I have been imagined that I'm going to be teaching, that I've been guiding, my mentoring. But then all of a sudden, everything started coming back. I've been doing this for lifetimes. Like I know that in the second pyramid, that school was used to teach the universal loss I have like a very strong connection there because I know I thought there. That's just one in Egypt. In Peru, my high priestess also. In the UK as well. A lot of us that also go back to keep 
vortices in key areas. So maybe right now Peru's calling you, maybe it's Egypt, maybe it's the UK, maybe it's Hawaii, maybe we're connected with Lemuria. The soul knows, like highest self knows, source knows where you need to go first. And then the other one, the one thing that I always ask and I, I tell people is just don't get attached to anything and just enjoy the ride because then more gets revealed, more gets revealed. And that, yes, you get like this beautiful euphoria, but there's always more. Remember, this is an expansion energy. So now I've done so many not only car transmissions, but I also do energy healing as well. And I've taught so many people and I have various different students and they're the ones that just kept me going. <laughs> it was them. So the most thing I'm proud of are my students and it's hearing them, how they enjoy my teachings. It helps me remember more and more. So I feel like we're all coming together to remember one-on-one. -on -one. So I want you to ask yourself a sincere question. Why are you here? What is attracting you about becoming a CA facilitator? Maybe some of you haven't had a transmission and this is going to be your first time. But Can I it? what is it? You can write it down or on yourself and you can put it in the chat. It'd be nice to put it in the chat so I can look at it afterwards. But what is attracting you? Why? Why do people want to become energy healers? Maybe some of you already are energy healers and are looking to add now the calm modality. Why? Are you really thinking, what is calling you about this? Beautiful. So let's start with who are we really? What are we? Some of you guys are more advanced. Some of so for some of you, this is new. Some of you guys probably see this picture and probably know where I'm going. But we are light. We are energy. And energy is light. We are conductors of energy. Our body is 70% water. Water is a conductor. So when you see this beautiful light that's coming through, if it goes through a prism, a diamond, water, what does it do? It fractalizes the white light into all the different spectrums of colors which is also the chakra, right? What are we when we look at our energetic body? We're that light. And then we fractalize it within our body as well. So you can see the rainbow. So you see, and we are everything. We're all every single color that's in there. The better conductors that we can be, meaning the cleaner our body is, the higher conductors we can be. And it's interesting with this because when people start this mission, um, kind of like in the 60s when, you know, a lot of civil rights came through, the feminine movement, but we swung the pendulum from one extreme to the other. <laughs> We're like women, we want to do everything and now we're trying to balance it. Sometimes that the same thing happens with spirituality. And you're like, oh, I just want to become the best conductor. There's this mentality, again, of doing, 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 doing. And you become so rigid. Not rigid, but very judgy of other people, whether you want to admit it or not. It's about relaxing. If anything, it's about relaxing, letting go, and allowing people you know, to do whatever they need to do to experience whatever it is they need to experience because everything is perfect. You just got to focus on yours and let others be because otherwise you are contracting. And it's all about love at the end of the day, just opening up. So it doesn't matter how, if you become a vegan, if you don't drink alcohol, 
you know, that you meditate all the time, but if you like come out afterwards and you're, you're like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, you know, and it's like you're irritated. At the beginning, I get it. You know, you're adjusting to the energy. You really got to watch that. So who are we to be able to really do that? So every light, all the colors are different frequencies. They, If you, th if you think about every color, it has a different emotion. It brings a different feeling. But it's all the same thing. Everything is light. So this is who we are. So although we're on the path and we get like one, like the first time I went to the SRF, I was looking for a church like crazy and finally went up for service to the shrine of Paramahansa Yogananda, who's an ascended master. And wow, I couldn't believe what I was. I've never felt anything like that. And I've done all kinds of medicine. But that type of bliss, it's a very unique frequency. But remember, it's a spiral. We're continuously shedding skin, just like I was describing with the weaving. As you're pulling the yard, one knot starts getting loose, and then the next one, and the next one. So it's a constant death and re birth that we are experiencing because what's happening is we are learning once again everything comes down to love we come back lifetime after lifetime after lifetime to this world to learn how to love like truthfully unconditional love if i ask someone do you have fear and someone raised their hand to say i don't have a fear guess what? They have fear. You know why? Someone that doesn't have fear doesn't even know what fear is. They just don't. They don't think about it. They're just there. So there are many fears that we have that we bring from our lineage, from our experiences in this lifetime, from our past lives, and even sometimes from multidimensionalities that are happening. So what's happening is we're breaking down old beliefs, old patterns, expired behaviors, addictions that we may have, so many things, so many travelers, whatever we call lower frequency densities. So the more we're able to break away and heal and repattern, like completely like rewire this density that we're carrying and letting it go, that's when our kundalini is able to rise. So it all comes down to healing. All of you guys have gone to this moment here and you've all done various different practices. You all come from different walks of life. You probably have been practicing other types of modality, but you all got here. That alone tells you that there's so many different ways to skin the cat for you to even get here. The thing is, the more healing that you do, the more you raise your frequency, because that's what happens. You're carrying, <laughs> you're carrying this weight. In order to come up, we got to let it go. So whatever, however it is for some people, and there's so many different ways and all the medicines that are out there, all the modalities serve, their purpose. Just got to know what's for you at what time. So let me ask you guys, right? What is energy? So let me give you what the encyclopedia, so encyclopedia says about what is energy, right? In physics, um, energy is the quantitative property that is transferred to a body or to a physical system recognizable in the performance of work and in the form of heat and light. Very physics, right? But there's this there's this output that needs to be done. So energy is a property of matter and space. It can be transferred between objects like a conduction and can be converted in its form. What I like about this definition is it cannot be created or destroyed. Nailed it. Beautiful. Cannot be created or destroyed. So we are energy. When were we created and when does it finish? 
<laughs> right? So what is missing from this definition that we have right now in the Wikipedia encyclopedia? So what is missing? What have we learned about energy through our studies now? A lot of us, I know, there's there's a lot of noise in um, social media. Some people are more aligned, but sometimes I, I just see people reposting stuff. I'm like, wait, <laughs> I wouldn't repost that. Um, it's really like tuning in. Is this come? Is this, is this creating division or is this creating union and harmony? It's very simple. So what is the energy teaching us? What are we learning now that we're more connected with energy? If you have this calling to be here, the energy calls you. There's something about this energy modality that is calling you. So everything that's written here, it's, it's very external output. You know, it's talking about more like burning calories as a form of energy, food is energy also that is very well understood, but it's missing the essence that we are pure conscious energy. And that we're having this experience in this avatar, in this physical body. We never stop being who we truly are. So think of it like a portion of us just being here in our avatar. But ourselves is like that main energy. That's what people call it, connecting with the higher self. To me right now, I like calling it spirit, connecting with spirit. Um, a lot of people like calling it higher consciousness, source, universe, however you call it. But that's when you know you're being guided and you're in that divine flow. We never lose that connection with who we truly are. But the more we're able to <laughs> clean away or really, really like dust off all these beliefs that were ingrained in us as part of our experience in life, the more we're going to remember. So this energy is consciousness. It's intelligent. It's called you here. Like I said, for me, I like calling it spirit. And I have my reasons for that. Because um, to me, it's more about like the Shekinah. It's more lately the Shekinah and the white dove. And once again, it's that pure light that can be fractalized in so many different ways, which that allows me to play with everything. So I don't say I'm this, I'm that. You know, I try not to because I know I'm everything. And I can allow myself to play with whatever I need to play whatever color I need to play with at that moment. So having said that, and we are energy, so you see how we are heaven on earth. You see how the light comes in. We come from the light. You know, we give energy to this avatar that we are. And we are that rainbow bridge. We are the ones that are bringing heaven on earth because we are that divinity. This is who we truly are. So do you guys know, you can write it down, when we're in our mother's belly, what is the first organ to develop? Let me see if people put in your... Ooh, only two people answered. <laughs> Good, yes, the heart. Do you guys know what the second one is? Brain, it's actually the ear. Mm -hmm. So it's the heart. So the heart, it's that connector, it's that bridge. So we have the upper pyramids of our chakras and we have the lower pyramids of our chakras. So three up, three down, and the middle one is the heart. The upper ones are very light, taking us back to where we come from, had the heavens. 
and the lower ones are important to remember and be able to survive and do whatever it is we said we're going to do here when when we decided to come here so they're more important but it's the heart if we can open our heart all of the other chakras just start opening up as well and they're aligned themselves beautiful okay so how high do you think your energy is flowing how well do you think your energy is flowing right now? <laughs> Maybe some of you do those, do vision, visualization to clear your chakras. Maybe for some of you, this is new, but it's something that is constant, constantly moving, constantly goes, it can fluctuate. Just an idea if you want to rank it like from one to ten, one through ten. I love, I love your sincerity very low. You know, some of you guys know you feel it like, oh, you know, I'm clearing my third eye. There's a blockage there, whatever it may be. So for some of you, you know, maybe it's a five. So if you rank it from one to ten. And I love it because you're being intuitive as well. And you know, like how you're feeling and we are entering a full moon right now and I love it with new moons and full moon because everyone feels it completely different depending also you know what planets they're having their chart what is happening for them or what threat is ready to be released for me December's wow usually <laughs> very emotional I'm shedding really like so many skins. It's like rebirth after rebirth, like almost every December. They're so deep for me. So I like a lot of seven start coming in. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, let's move on. So yes, at the end of the day, the energy, we're looking at our Taurus right? So this is what we call like that donut shape. There's a hole in the middle and our whole body, since it's energy, what it's doing, it's being able to move this energy that's coming in from the heavens, like we saw in the previous picture, and also coming up from the earth. And it's this constant flow of energy that's coming from the heavens, that's coming from from Mother Earth nonstop and it starts circulating and this amplifies. And it that's why when someone walks in or you put some people next to each other, you can feel each other's energy because this creates this magnetic field that we have. So this is our whole body. The heart also has its own magnetic field, just the heart alone. They've actually done studies to see who has a greater electromagnetic field between the heart and the brain. Can you guys guess what it is? You can put it in the chat. And then by how much do you think, whether it's the heart or the brain, This is all been proven scientifically. Well, it is the heart. <laughs> and it's by 60 times greater than the brain. That's how strong our heart is. It is pumping blood to our whole body. And just one little key to give you look at look at the heart like the form of abundance it's not retaining anything and it's not giving too much it knows exactly how much to give and it's always in flow the heart is abundant it is strong it is always giving and receiving giving and receiving giving and receiving giving and receiving that is that constant flow. It's like connecting with our heart. We're our own abundance that allows us to be in this beautiful paradise 
that our ancestors created for us. Beautiful. So now we're going to move to the next part. So we got an idea of what's energy just in general. So what is Kundalini activation? What is the difference with Kundalini activation? When did it begin? Right? When did all of this start? So let's take a look. Do any of these pictures look familiar to you? Have you seen it before? Everyone has different backgrounds here. So if we look at here in the middle, this is actually the staff of Osiris. And Osiris is the, he's a god from Egypt. So you have Isis, Osiris, and Horus. And he is the one that was shredded in many pieces by his brother. And it was Isis and Hothar that put him back together. So they resurrected him. So this is, he's the one also that comes from like the underground to like, once again, come and help complete you. So here you see two snakes with the Kundalini, right? They understand what energy means. And if you look at, there's so much history with Kundalini and all the temples. You can see at the crowds of the Egyptian gods and goddesses, you'll see it there. I like this one right here to the right. That's the Sumerian deity, Ningisita. So even within the Sumerians, they knew what the kundalini was. You see the serpents that look more like dragons. And to the right, what do we have? You actually have, these are more um, Chinese um, symbology as well, represented with the dragons. At the bottom here, um, it's actually Greek. And right here in the middle, this is Chichen Itza. Everyone knows. A lot of people know Chichen Itza, but the pyramids are actually called Kukulkan, which literally means serpent. And the one that's very popular that we know about, this is Hermes flying, but it can also be Mercurial also. And here, what is he holding is the, the seduces, which is now the symbol of health. If you see an ambulance, what you see is the symbol of self. They knew that in order for us, you know, this comes from before, in order for us to be in our primal health, our kundalini needs to rise. They understood this from the beginning. And the one in the top left, that looks like a beautiful dragon, is Quetzalcoatl with the Aztecs. And same thing, they understood about the Kundalini and it's all over the world. You're going to see this as well. It, I guess that there was, this is something that has been here since existence. So it's like we're starting to remember and going back again, remembering. What we're doing is we're remembering, which is the one that's the most popular one is the one from India, Kundalini is Sanskrit, and it means coiled, circular coil, and it's the feminine aspect, and it's like a, it's the life for the life, like a coiled a serpent that starts rising from the base of the spine. So all of you guys have seen this picture before, and you guys understand that the Kundalini resides on the root chakra at the bottom. And it's both the feminine and the mask. The feminine is the left side. The masculine is the right side. Is when both this energy start rising, they start they start becoming balanced. That is what the kundalini starts rising. So you see, you have India, and then you have all these other different cultures, and they're all raising their kundalini in various different ways, and 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 in different times of history. So I, for example, I was a Kundalini yoga teacher before. And I think it's been three, three and a half years now, at least. Um, I got the message very strong from my highest self to stop doing any masculine modalities. 
to just stop because I was living in, for me, I was living in my masculine self three and a half years old because I needed to protect myself after the abandonment. So it was time for me to really embrace the feminine side. So I quit the gym. <laughs> it was also in my personal nine year, which I thought was interesting. Uh, when the message came through, I quit the gym. I stopped um, teaching Kundalini yoga. Um, I was way more in touch with my with my cycle as well. So I was no longer doing any type of extreme sports. Or, I used to be a runner, especially when I was in my period or trying to do anything that was that that cost that was creating too much energy. And that's that's when I started really tuning in to myself. So no longer was I trying to force the kundalini energy to go up. So in kundalini yoga, uh, what we have are specific exercises with, I love it because it comes with their mudras. Um, it comes with, you know, the kriya, how you need to move your hands. It comes with a chant. It's pretty complete. Uh, you know, they're like, okay, look, first we're going to do an exercise for three, seven minutes. We we'll repeat first is the root chakra, then the sacral then the solar, then the heart, you know, all the way up. So you're racing the kundalini. So what are we doing here? We are forcing it, <laughs> which is fine at the beginning, at least for me. That was my path, part of my path. So then what started happening for me, and I started doing so much different types of works and connecting with myself and starting living in different portals like Egypt, Peru, Bali, Mexico. I mean, right now I'm looking at the beach. <laughs> I really like tuning into nature. So I started connecting and grounding and feeling the energy from the cosmos and from the earth. But most importantly, especially when I was in Bali, I would just go in through a trance and just like really feel spirit. And then this inner dance started happening and I would just move. And then it first it ignited actually more, I think in Mount Shasta, then Bali, and then even more once I went to Egypt, this was already happening naturally. I said, as I started expanding my consciousness. So I want to tell you this guys too, because what happens is sometimes people want to come and right away, they want to like know everything. Enjoy your journey. <laughs> enjoy the journey. Like I said, everything is spiral and we're all helping each other grow and really like bring, come up in, in energy. And that's when I found the Ka, Cap Modality that was there, but it's all the same thing. I was already doing it for me. You know, I don't have the tools that I teach now. I mean, I couldn't go to sleep. I tried going to sleep and if it was a full moon, there was an eclipse. I was just like this the whole time. Not only that, but then my throat chakra started opening during my dark night of the soul. It was very, very scary. <laughs> so I understand when I have students that are coming, maybe this is you, that there's some things that are happening to you with your, your body movement, um, what you're saying, thoughts that you're having. Because literally, yes, like, like heaviness is coming out. You're going through a deep cleanse. And I'm, I love holding space for that because I've gone through it. Like when people, when people come, you know, and they scream, like to me, it's not a big deal. Because it's nothing like I have yet to meet anyone that's had a most horrific. Mine wasn't just a scream. It was like this melody. And it was dark. That lasted in one and a half years. And that helped me also find my master, like my energy healer school. And in, it allowed me to go somewhere else. And that was my path. So it has been my own journey. And this is what I love about Kundalini activation because it's the feminine. So I was being trained already by my higher self before to how to enter this. Plus I had different teachers. Like I go and spend time with like, the ancient, you know, like Maria Pasta that we work with in Peru, she's 96 year old. She's the last Alto Misayuk that we have, the last highest priestess Nusta. 
And it's something that people don't get initiated to nature chooses you, for example. And like, even like, you know, being with Matias and like being having like every single day, like doing it when everything was being live, that's not being done ever again. <laughs> but I was meant to be there, for example. It was unbelievable. Like I've gone through so much. So Ka is a transmission of surrendering. No mind, no more doing. You drop into your heart, you drop into your own energy, and it allows you to taste the divine within. Literally, a lot of times you just surrender. And as people want to become calf facilitators, I empower them through my example. And that's how people explain it even to me even better. To be able to really fall into, because a lot of people come and they're like, oh, I have this modality, Shakti, or like all these other exercises, tantric, turn up. I'm like, I get it. But there's so much mind in that. We can use it. But if you come to this modality, we're going to put it aside because now we're learning a different modality. We can use it for in another place and time. We can integrate it, but it's going to be different. So it's this beautiful electrifying high energy that's coming through. So let me introduce you to the six pillars of what a calf facilitator embodies. What are the six sacred pillars? Their wisdom, their expression, their oneness, their pleasure, grounding, and also frequency. And you see how I have the, this is Metatron actually, at the bottom of the, of the, of the um, picture. But here it is. So it's the Merkaba. So if you look at it from two dimensional, it's a star David. But if you were to look at this a three dimensional, it is a star of David. So, and what does the Merkaba do? It activates the light body. That's what we're doing. Everything's geometry at the end of the day, which is why the Merkaba makes sense for me. And I do Merkaba activations as well. So it's embodying every single one of these pillars. So let me go through them a little bit more. What does grounding mean? A lot of people that come, and a lot of you guys, maybe you meditate a lot, maybe you do light language already. Um, maybe you can connect and you can, you know, you're always up there. But what happens is as soon as something happens on the earth and someone says something, oof, you're scared. It's hard for you to survive here in this 3D world. So grounding is so important. People embody how to be fully present here. It's not about going away. We're going to go back there. Remember, we're here to bring heaven on earth, not to be dangling back in heaven. We came here for a mission. Really like fully being present or we're holding space and trusting, trusting your energy and everything that is happening because you are the God, God is creator. You take accountability completely for everything that is happening. You don't blame it on anyone else. You attracted this. True space holder. Connection with Mother Pachamama. The people that are the most best healers, teachers that I know, their love for Gaia, for Pachamama, for the elements, for the animals, it's to another level. And this is why I love taking people to Peru. The people, not, not taking people, but the people, I love working with the people that get called to go to Peru, or even like the UK. People always tell me and ask me, what's the difference, you know, between like Egypt or Peru? It's like, once again, it depends where your soul is telling you to go. But when you get ready to go to Peru, it's like it'll ground you. If you think you love nature, oh, it'll take you somewhere else. It'll make you cry because it's just so beautiful. Then you learn how to work with the elements. You guys want to manifest. You got to work. It's tangible. Work with the elements. And this is the big one. It's grounding means coming back here. You seeing yourself as an equal with everyone else. There's no one in front of you. There's no one behind you. Really being here because when you're when you tend to be up here, there's this protection that it's coming up because we still need to go. Obviously, there are fears, which is why you're not coming here. Like this is my biggest job, especially on the double certification that I do a lot of my students great channelers medium but oh my god like grounding 
So it, it takes, it takes time, but we do a lot of work, but that's another type of healing that I do in intuitive quantum healing to really help. And it's the work that we're doing every day. The other one is expression, embodying expression. Really allowing that voice to expand, allowing your truth to come out. What happens a lot is that people at the beginning, they start yelling, they start screaming. And then after they get more and more advanced, these new melodies that they never heard before, they start chanting, like language start coming through for a lot of people. That's the first time. Most importantly, they start speaking their truth because now they're embodying who they are. They're not making excuses. And they are allowed to feel the rawness and the wildness that lives within them because we are nature. We are nature and we can express ourselves. The other one is really embodying pleasure. Whether you're a male, you're a female, within the lineage, there's a lot of sexual trauma. A lot of sexual trauma gets released. This allows for a lot of the somatic movement, for the dance to come through, to completely, truly surrender to another level, and then experience this orgasmic bliss. It's just another level. And that's when the goddess sensual energy comes in and really becoming the god goddess. It's just to another level. As if you're new, and maybe some of you guys have done this for a while, but it's this, you start hearing the same thing everywhere. It all comes down to love, but it's in that experience because now you're understanding on a deeper level, like much, like really like sinking into your bones, into your DNA, your molecules, what that really means. Because you get expanded and you feel this different bliss, this different orgasmic pleasure. So abundance, magnetism, and this is when it really comes in. We become abundant and magnetic when we are creating with pleasure. People come and tell me, well, how do you do it? I'm like, what's going to make you happy? What do you please? And really tuning in, we have been asking for permission, not allowing ourselves to really express who we truly are. So we really got to look in there. And it's through the work that we're doing to really discover and remember what that really is. Some of you guys don't even know. And that is when the creative, the artist comes in. And you remember that you're the artist. You are creating your life. We have a white canvas and every single day, as long as we can breathe and think, we can create a new reality. And that's when the wisdom comes in, the ancient knowledge starts coming. This is when you start remembering, oh, wow, yes, I was meant to be here. I made this contract before. You start remember life. You start coming across people that you've done this work with. I had so many people already <laughs> that come through, especially through these classes or retreats that we go to. This is when your intuition goes up. This is when you're connected to your highest self, to spirit, to source. A lot of people, they're like discernment, discernment. Sometimes I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, if you don't know, you wait till you know. And you know how to use discernment. By being guided by spirit, you become your inner girl. I mean, you can look at all the people that I've studied with everything. At the end of the day, what does it come down to? My inner girl. This is why I'm teaching now. Because I'm teaching it the way spirit is asking me to teach. What is the difference I keep hearing between cap and this? You hear, cap is amazing because it's just um, it's just transmission and that's it. There is no knowledge at all. It's you go and you receive the transmission and it's a brand. But what, and to me, there were a lot of, it's like to me, I like explaining this because that was my background. 
I had to go through CAP. That was part of my growth. And right away, I knew it wasn't for me because it's not how, how spirit wants me to lead. And this is why I created my own. I've been doing this for lifetimes. And it's this humble empowerment. I always tell people, tune in and see where you need to go. Tune in. Tune in and see who is your teacher. This is why I love my classes, because a lot of the people that we go in, there's a strong calling, and that's when the magic happens and the groups that are created. Once you get this wisdom, this is where the DNAs get upgraded. The rewiring. This is where it comes in. And we feel this oneness. We start healing relationships. How we, our relationships, the frequency are our soul family. Who's our soul family? Our family that we were born into. We chose the right mother. We chose the right father, sister. And they're the ones that irritate us the most and they can get to us. Right? Because they come and bring our biggest lessons for us. A lot of relationship healing that goes through this. And it comes to self-love. Everything's a reflection of us. Sacred union. And then this is the divine bliss within. It awakens. I'm just like thinking of all the beautiful moments I've had and that continue to happen. Whether it's through cut transmissions by myself, but it's I'm connecting. You can't go out to spirit. And you can see the dream. You own your dream. You own it completely. You know we're all one. Everything's a reflection of you and that all is love. Truly, 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 truly. Ooh, one, one, one participants. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Thank you for putting that. So here, the other one is frequency. It's all about, like I said before, the more healing that we do for ourselves and we let go of whatever density we're holding, the higher our frequency. And we, there's so many different tools and methods and plant medicines. They all serve their purpose. We're all of us, all of, all of our blueprints are very different, very, very different, completely different. So trust where you need to go. Trust where you need to go. And then even when I go to some trainings and I've gone before and my inner self, my inner girl didn't agree with certain things the teacher said, 100%, I knew I was still receiving because there was maybe a 1% or 2% that I, I needed to receive from them. And I knew I had to go there for that. So I thank them and I honor that as well. Because they're bringing in something. We all have different paths. This is where the awakening of the spiritual gifts come in. We, As soon as we unblock our, our kundalini channel, our chakras become more upon our energetic field, become stronger. All of a sudden you start chanting, the light language starts coming in. You can connect to source, to, to the higher self so much easier. Brain rewired comes in. When you're channeling, you're doing psychic surgery, but you don't know what's happening because it's just happening. You see your hands and you're in coherence and you're in alignment. That's just so beautiful. So this is the embodiment of becoming a capitalizer. And this is through my training, by the way, people. They don't, they don't teach any of this anywhere else. This is something that I developed through my experience and through my remembrance. So unleashing your healing potential. So if you're looking to become a kundalini facilitator, 
you're really looking to now, maybe for you, it's the first time if you want to step up and become an energy healer, and ready to rise to your calling, but you want to do it from a place of trust. You want to hold space for others to heal as well. You got to fill up your cup first as well. And like, like true energy healing classes, whatever type it is, ulti like first the job starts with you first. So it is the depth cleansing of you. It is deep. The trainings are all about you. So you are receiving deep, deep healing in order to awaken and really embody. So we're going in with a different intention as well of really holding that space. So who is ready to go to this next step? With the cut training, it is a 12-week program. And with any training, this is why I like Dolores Cannon's training with her with her quantum healing. I've never done it, but my friends have done it. And I love it because they say like phase one, they're like, you have to do so many practice. I'm like, that's perfect. That's exactly how it should be. It's all about practice, 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 practice. The more you practice, the more you're going to learn. The more you're going to be in contact with your energy and how your energy works with someone else. So with the training, especially when we do trainings, like I don't go through any of this, especially when we're going up. We are going in and we are going straight in doing the self-activation. We're doing the partner activation. We're starting to do the group activation, learning how to open and close. So that's the most important thing is the practice, practice, practice. And then like really for me, and this is what somebody's like, I love for people to develop their own signature style because that's how, this is, this is why I was called to do this training because you for you to be led and run your classes however you're going to run it. Right now, you see me all goddesses. Some days it's more witchy. Some days it's more shamanic. Some days it's very goddessy, like Isis comes in and Hathor comes in. And then I always people, don't get attached to anything. Maybe it's more Shakti and Shiva. You know, I'm very much into um, Hare Krishna. I love Krishna and Radha, right? So you go through the moves, like developing that signature style, or it can be very plain and simple and nothing as well. See where spirit is leading you and then surrendering every time. So this is what we are doing in the actual trainings, really like disengaging what is Kundalini and what is life force energy. We go more into the nervous system, the vagus nerve, the three ka channels. So everyone knows the Ida, Pingala, and the Shushuma is a picture I showed you with Kundalini. No, I go and I teach you how to connect with the three main channels. I teach you where your Kundalini channels are in the body and then how to activate and connect with the three universal channels. Something completely different. And by once again, they don't teach anything of this like this in other school. I don't even know what they're doing. This is something that I've developed. Once again, with CAP, you just go and receive the transmission. And then more than half the time we are sharing, like people are sharing their experience and that's it. Um, which is beautiful. You know, there's no how to hold space. There's none of that. We just go and, and I love it because it's very plain and it's very simple. And if that's how you want to do it and you want the branding of CAP, which has become very popular um, and you tune in and that's for you, then maybe that's where you should go. If you feel like this is more for you, then you, I'm not here to convince anyone. I'm just sharing you. I'm just here to share and see who connects with this because I am looking or attracting my soul family. I put in something that I love with pleasure and see what bees I attract with my honey. So I teach about protection and clearing space which I don't know what other trainings are doing. I know they don't teach any of that in CAP. So for me, it was important because I already had all this knowledge before. And I also saw all the other questions and people were having afterwards when they started. And I'm like, why didn't they teach any of this? Um, and then that's okay. Let's, and they don't have to. But if this is more the way that you want to learn it, then you can come to me. You know, I talk about the purging system. We go into the trauma release really going to the most common uh, frequently asked questions. The training is continuous. We meet right away. It's intensive at the beginning. And then we continue meeting. And I continue teaching 
with other trainings, it's just a transmission. And that's, I mean, that that's what it was. Just, there was no, once again, no teaching. <laughs> it was just transmissions. With me, I am teaching <laughs> when we meet because <laughs> I love it. I like it. And because I actually can't explain it. <laughs> But my most fun part about Ka is like, oh my God, you become a DJ. Do you like music? Like I teach you how to create like activating, electrifying playlists. And we have so much fun doing it. Your own, right? And I tell you what's the best formula to use, um, how to facilitate online and in person, continue giving receivables. Then what's the thing about my, I actually invest in creating a nice web portal for you. So it's easy for you to find information. You're not going through any Facebook or anything like that. You have manuals that are then all everything is recorded and it goes up into the web portal. All the music playlists are there. The logos are there. If you want to use it, I don't make anyone use my brand if they want to teach or anything like that. I don't do any of that. Once again, people keep asking, well, CAP, CAP is a franchise. They tell you how much you need to charge and everything. They've done a really good job with their marketing. I respect that that's the route you want to go, then that's where you should go. With me, it's free. And where's the energy? I'm, it's not like I'm giving you, it's not something that, which I think it's different how other schools maybe teach it, but it's not something like, oh, I'm giving you a power. No, it's something that you already have and it's awakening through the high frequency space that we are creating. So um, a lot of perks, you can be featured on the website and become also part of the facilitator. So I ask you to ask yourself, what do you wanna create? Why are you here? Like I asked you before, what is the impact that you really wanna make to this earth? Have you already know what is your soul mission? Has that already come clear to you? Through this method, it comes much, much more clear. And must learn to dream big while being awake. We're constantly dreaming. We are dreaming in the making. So this is just a glimpse of the Ka family that we have. We have people in USA, Europe, Asia, Latin America. It just like brings me so much love seeing these beautiful faces. A lot in New York. New York, oh my God, they went right away after the training. Wow, a lot of movement going on there. So go New York. Um, and then on the left side, you can see what we do is we get together with all the CAF facilitators and we we break it up in half. Half of the time, some of us give, half of the times we receive. So you get these healings, you know, even after the training so that you guys can continue to receive and give healing. So it's so powerful just to be a part of that. So here are all the upcoming trainings that are coming up. The first one is the online training for those of you that can't make it to any of the locations that are coming up. It's going to be intense. Uh, it starts on February 3rd and 4th, which is around the corner. Then it's Los Angeles. Uh, and then and you see Bali. Bali is a whole week. If you can make it to Bali, the it's a portal. The intention there and in because the, it's the portal of purification and it's going to be in Ubud. Ubud is the portal of Bali. So we're going to be doing it in Ubud itself. And it's a whole week. So yes, we're going to cover everything that we would, but then there's going to be many more extras. We're going to be going around the town. We're going to be getting purifications, um, going to like natural waterfalls. And we're going to be in this amazing upscale resort because I that's what I like for South South America going to Lima doing one in Spanish as well coming up in March going back to New York going back to London so there's a lot of opportunities that are coming up so let me tell you a little bit about February 3rd that's coming up with this launch and also it gives you an idea for all of the other trainings so for example February 3rd Right away, the weekend is intensive. We meet for eight hours, Saturday, Sunday. We integrate for three days. And again, we meet. So I like how you get like this little break, especially because it's in line. And then we meet right again to continue the training. And from there, we meet bi-weekly. 
And once again, we continue practice, practice, practice. You will receive a non-dual transmission. Um, you know, right away, we want to go in with creating our playlist as well, um, adding your unique flavor, and then teaching you, you know, what are this Kundalini three um, universal sources that are there that are completely different from the Ida, Pingala, and Shushuma, and adjusting that potency, tools that I didn't have when I was going through my awakening and I couldn't sleep and I stopped it because I didn't know you can, you know, adjust it. I had no clue. So requirements. And once again, I don't teach those tools anywhere else. Um, requirements. To graduate with any of the training, you must attend the intensive. It's okay, you know, if you're not able to attend um, when we meet biweekly, that's fine. But the intensives, those, those, those days are key, key, key must be present. Um, everything is recorded. Like I said, I'm put up in the web. Most frequently question I ask is, do I have to wait all 12 weeks um, before I can start practicing or start facilitating? You do not. As long as you feel confident and empowered, you can start. I mean, we want you to practice and go out there and partner up with everyone else. So after the week, the intensive is done. A lot of them is three days. And they're all actually three days, actually. Um, and then we continue. Just wanted to bring that up. Um, besides from that, everyone that goes through the training gets all these bonuses. So first off is the exchange that I talked about. We give and receive the Ka healings amongst the Ka family community. So you get to meet all these friends, friends in the world, um, a private Instagram group. So then you can really meet with people, see what they're going on. And it's only for Ka facilitators. So really then you can collaborate if you go you go, you maybe you go to Europe and you're here in the US or you go somewhere else, there's gonna be more in Bali now. You can meet up with people, maybe you can partner up and facilitate together. And you and it's so much fun because with everyone to Instagram, you can see what they're doing, what they're up to. Like I said, I used to teach the universal laws in my 12,000 years ago in Egypt. So I love teaching about universal laws. So you'll receive my e-course on universal laws. And I was in Bali. I created this beautiful self-love ebook. It's actually a 21 day self-love um, um, ebook. And so many great tips. You get all of that. Plus, you get eight curated electrifying playlists um, that I created all for you. So you're ready to facilitate. But if you're really ready now to go in, I do have some amazing bonuses. The early bird for the online training has already expired. Expired, I believe. Um end of December. So because I'm doing this Ka Master Class, you still qualify for the $222 off, but you have to book within the four, next 48 hours in order to get the $222 off. And what I'm doing for anyone that books any other, if you want to take a picture of this, go ahead. Um, if any of the other bonuses that are coming up or any of the other trainings, so for the first five healers, that are going to book any of the services except for the online card training. I am going to be gifting a personal call with me, a one on one. It's a soul alignment se session. Like I said, I'm also an intuitive quantum healer teacher. So I do the readings and we're going to go in. This is different because with Ka, you know, we're just allowing the energy to flow. But with this, I go in and I'll go read. I'll read your aura, look at your Kundalini channels. I'll look to see how your chakras are spinning. Um, and most of the time they'll tell me where's the blockage? When did it happen? This lifetime, other life. I get this whole story. And sometimes there's even like foreign energy that's living there as well. So I do all kinds of healing. So I'm going to do a one-on-one -on -one soul alignment to focus to with the intention for you to overcome any self-doubt, any self-worth, anything that is disempowering you from you really embracing and stepping in as the role of a calf facilitator. So that's a bonus that's coming in. And this will be for the five first people that want to come to LA, that want to come to Bali, Peru. I haven't put in the registration links for um, London and New York yet. Uh, but if you know you want to do it, if you want to put in that deposit, it automatically honor you to receive the early bird and qualify for the 30-minute private session. And then what I'm gifting everyone is for 
for LA, Bali, and Peru, my Ka membership. So I do Ka ceremonies. It's part of the Love Temple twice twice a month. So bi-weekly on the new moon and the full moon, we're having one tomorrow, for example. The first hour is a workshop. I love teaching. I'm always bringing in a different God or goddess, sometimes we do family constellation. Sometimes we it's more shamanic and we're doing rituals. It's always different. We go with the theme of the energy. Invocations, I channel, and then you receive the transmission. So it's the membership. It's only $33 a month. If you want to just want to join the membership, I welcome you. But if you do the training, you receive a whole year membership. If you register for Peru, Bali, LA, or if you want to put your deposit for anything else. So those are my announcements. And as I promise for you that are attending live, I have the ebook that I'm going to share with you. So let me stop sharing and let me show you the ebook. So here it is. So I'm going to drop the link to you after the transmission, but this is the ebook that I've created for you. Right here, you have all the pillars of what it takes to embody and become a co facilitator. Going, I'm going under my training. And I'm giving you tips on first on how to really make sure that your energy is flowing and really enhance, enhancing and clearing the toroidal field. So it's a nice visualization that you can do because ultimately the energy should be moving like a fountain. We see that fountain of energy, of water. The water moves up and it comes down, right? So it's always flowing. That's how our energy should be moving at all times. So that's my little tip there. And then I have a clearing blocks mantra. Um, it has a nice, um, it's a meditation with mudras and really allowing you to really tap into your breath and clear a mantra. And it's all about clearing blocks because ultimately that's what we want to do and go into the subconscious. And then what I've created for you. So what you're receiving is a PDF so you can go to the links. So what I've created is this awesome quiz that is going to allow you, it's only three minutes, to see which pillar out of the six pillars you need to pay more attention to. Where so like really where's your energy blocked, but related to the six pillars of becoming a co facilitator. So the the link will be on the PDF, and then here it is, and then you just move through the quiz, and you can go through it to find out which pillar it is, and it'll give you some tips as well, based on what pillar you have blocked. So that was it. So and then right here also on the PDF you'll have the link to all the co trainings. So here's the website and here are all the trainings, different landing pages for each one of them for Peru. So here's the Bali facilitator, for example, and you can just go through it. Okay, look at this. <laughs> Who wants to come and play this beautiful resort where we're going to have and live so much magic and purification? It's just astonishing that you can go through all the different websites. All right, beautiful people. So who's ready to receive the transmission now? I've gone a little bit over than what I thought. So lay down. And if this is your first time, the trick is to just surrender. Surrender, surrender, beautiful people. Let go. We are in the moon of Leo. We have entered a new era, a new humanity that's coming through. Things are going to be moving at light speed. It's air. At the same time, the un unimaginable, the undreamable are going to start happening too. Because our, our personal dreaming is limited to our beliefs. So open yourself up for magic and balance, especially right now. So if this is your first time, you're going to put your hands to the side, giving the sign that you're ready to receive. And we're going to take some deep inhales through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. 
One more time. Deep, deep, deep inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. Beautiful. And now we're going to tighten up our whole body. Tight, 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 tight body. Tight legs, tight arms, making fists with our hands, curling our toes. Tight, 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 tight. Inhale, hold. And release. One more time. Tight, 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 tight. Inhale, hold. Release. And one more time. Do it once again. Tight, 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 tight. Inhale, hold. Release. Okay, beautiful. And just allow the energy to flow however it wishes to flow. And when you are ready, just allow the energy to move.
aprende a reconhecer a minha própria grandeza Fiz as pazes com as sombras, essa é minha riqueza Tenho a sabedoria das minhas ancestrais Eu não ando sozinha, conheci meus orixás Minha magia é forte comigo, ninguém pode Estou sempre protegida pela espada de São Jorge Um bruxa não se mexe, é bom saber por quê. Se brincar comigo, nunca mais vai me esquecer
Oh
She's gone. Off, but I'm coming back in. So bear with me, just go in, computer powered off something. We have people working out here. So close your eyes and go back in. Then I'll connect you back in. We still have a couple phones left. <laughs> and we're back in.
Remain with your eyes closed. Giving thanks for all that was received, bringing your hands to your heart, the right hand over the left. 
giving thanks for all the guys, for Mother Earth, for Father Sky, to all the ancient ancestors that were here before us and gave birth to this beautiful paradise. And those are the elements to Mother Earth, to the waters, to the fire, to the air, to the ethers, to all four cardinal directions, above, below, and center, to all the animals and the skies and the land, underground, and the ocean, to all the earthy creatures and the realms of the in-between worlds. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And most importantly, giving thanks to yourselves, giving thanks to your ancestor, honoring our lineage from my mother's side, from her father's side, going back one generation, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way back to inception. Thanking them for doing whatever it is that they had to do in order to survive and enter, for us to enter here, be able to live this 3D world in this times. Thank you, ancestors, for all your work and realizing that we are the summation of them and everything that they weren't able to transmute from heaviness to light. It is up to us now to be that phoenix on the rise that is happening. We give ourselves a big, big hug, bringing in our little girl or a little boy or inner child, hugging them so tight, letting them know that we are here for them. And saying out loud, I love you, I love you, I love you. You are number one. You are priority. I am the God, goddess creator of my reality. Beautiful. Okay, everyone. And slowly start bringing your hands over your head. <laughs> Feeling that pencil stretch from the tip of your fingers to the tip of your toes. Maybe move your head left to right and slowly bring yourself up. And I've gone ahead and I've dropped the ebook on the on the messenger. So when you click on it, it should automatically open on your phone or on your computer and you can save it there. The links are there. The visualization is very beautiful for the Taurus. And then if you want to do the mantra meditation for clearing blockages, that obviously it's a masculine modality, but everything is perfect. That's what you need at that time you get called to. And then the other one is the quiz. The quiz is pretty hot right now. <laughs> Finding out what pillar it is that you want to they, that it's asking you to enhance a little bit more pain, more attention. There's some tips in there as well. And um, I'm going to open it up to questions. I know we went over time. Any Anything anyone wants to share? Sorry about the drop off. So I can't see the chats before that now. <laughs> Hopefully it did save though. Um, but I did read something about Leap. Um, I think they're out of Europe. So there's different schools um, of Kundalini. Um, I haven't done them, but they're all very similar. I, they're all very, very similar. And that's what I'm saying is tuning in to see where it is that you're being called to train. If you're looking to training, who is calling you? What's the energy? Who's your teacher? Um, and that's why for me, it's very, I don't do cell skulls or anything like that, because for me, it's all about like the people that come, they're like, Ooh, they knew they're just, there's like this inner knowing. And which is why a lot of my good, good and best friends that I found are also part of the training. Cause it's like soul family coming together and we're meant to work with each other and help each other grow. So that's what it is. So I love, love, love hearing from you and your reviews. I will be sending out the email with the recording and also reminding you of the bonuses that are available right now. If you're thinking about doing it online, 
So the bonus, we said it's um, for the next 48 hours, you can still get the early bird price. So that's going to be amazing. Bali is incredible. Peru, um, something else. Peru is a retreat. That is an Inca healer retreat. People always ask me, how do I continue increasing my Kundalini? <sighs> to me, for me, what has been very powerful is going to vortices, going to chakras around the world and then once again it's not it's not logical like oh i have my like spirit leads me where i need to go like i did not want to go to glastonbury during COVID in winter <laughs> and it was a fight <laughs> and obviously you know higher self won. um and it's been magical and i keep going back now so yeah, it's very different. If this is your first time, if you're here more for the transmission, I always suggest three times. Everyone's going to feel it different depending where they are within their practice. I, that's why I was just three times. Tomorrow I'm doing it again for the transmission. And I have the, the monthly membership, which is only $33 a month and you get two ceremonies. So I highly recommend that you check that out it's on the website. Um, people love that. And like, again, I'm teaching there as well. We're going with the different themes and we're aligning ourselves with the circadian rhythm of, of the universe, of the planets, of the earth, going with the elements. So you're tuning yourself in. That's why being part of the love temple is, is amazing. So um, if you're new, if you're starting off, even that a lot of my facilitators are also in the love temple because we're continuing, we're continuing, we continue being a family. Um, let me see what questions here are the different levels for car training. I'm going to be offering level two. Um, um, I think it's going to open up in June, July for my first level graduates that they've done for quite a while now. And that's going to be more non-dual and more of the tantric type of transmission for them. You got to start with the first one too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much as well. Looks like a lot of you guys felt it. So the quiz is in the, in the PDF. There are links in there so you can find it. Yeah. Let me know the answers and tag me on Instagram. So any questions that you have or any reviews you want to post, let me know. More than happy. Anyone else want to say anything? I'll open it up. Okay. <laughs> when is the next online? Um, yeah, it's it, we start February 3rd, 3rd, 4th. We rest for three days and we go again on that Thursday. So it's coming up, not this weekend, but the following weekend. So it's quick. So the take advantage of the early bird, bird pricing. Yeah, integration. That's what we're doing the whole time. That's why we have the 12-week program. We continue to teach. So I'm answering the questions where it's part of the built-in training. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I mean, I've had people that have done my calf facilitator, and what they do is they do the other training for IQH because that's that's something that's deep, that's that's different. Um, it you know, because there's there's so many different types of met methods as well. Um, eight hours every day, only for the intensive love. So the first two, three days that we meet, it's eight hours. So that's why I say it's a requirement to come for the first two days. Um, the intensive, and then we go on weekly, every other week. But for the online, we're meeting eight hours Saturday, eight hours Sunday. We might go a little bit over. Um, just want to make sure everyone gets in and they receive what they need to receive. And then we meet on Thursday. That one's in about two hours at the most. We should be okay. All the prices are on the website. And then when you click on the link on the PDF as well, it'll take you. So see which one is best for you, which ones you're more attracted to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It was just so lovely because, you know, when you're facilitating, you're, you're giving and you're receiving at the same time. It's like I'm receiving at the same time. I'm, I'm being present and I'm holding space. And, but I'm, I feel the energy. I'm connected with all of you guys. So it was, it was very blissful. It was very loving. And just have an open heart for everyone. And it, everything's just love. And be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. No one's perfect. <laughs> no one is perfect. That's why we come back. And this is a great time, you know, to speak your truth, whatever you may be feeling. People may be saying things that you don't like. That's okay. But they're being great teachers for you to tell how you respond. 
and sending love and light to everyone, regardless, they're on their path. They're teaching me and I'm teaching them. And that's all that matters. I love you all. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of the day. Um, if I can make it, what is it? <laughs> yeah, so it, the, it'll be up on the website. You're already on the email list. So see what next days are coming up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I love you all. Take care. Bye. Great meeting you all.